finishing part two of chapter two. With a slight sniff, she told him the house had been sold and she had come to take out the personal things. So, Hunter thought, that explains the empty suitcases. He shifted on the seat so he could study the passengers out of the corner of his eye. Everything he could learn about island visitors might help him in tracking the thief. As the horses clip-clapped past Marquette Park, the girl looked up with great interest at the historic fort on the sheer cliff above. Aunt Myra, she said, I've simply got to sketch the fort while I'm here and all the other places. I wish we were staying longer. Her aunt answered, you'll have plenty of time, Jancy. We'll work every morning, sorting and packing. Then after lunch, while I rest, you can see the sights and sketch whatever you like. After passing the island house, the taxi turned up the steep zigzag road to the bluff. Jancy was twisting her neck like an owl, trying to take in everything all at once. Hunter made a mental note of this. The bicycle thief, though dressed like a tourist, would not be interested in the sights. At Cragmore House, when the taxi had gone and the bags were inside, the girl turned to Hunter. My name is Jancy Southgate, she said. What's yours? Do you live on Mackinac Island? Hunter noticed that she said Mackinac instead of the harsh Mackinac, like most strangers. Yes, he answered. My name is Hunter Martineau. How come you know the right way to pronounce Mackinac? Jancy explained that this house had belonged to someone in their family a long time ago, so she had heard a lot about the island. Her aunt, Mrs. DuPont, had inherited the house and had sold it. Mrs. DuPont had called Hunter to bring the bags upstairs. Then she paid him very generously, and he went out the door, and Jancy followed him. What are the most interesting things to see on the island, she said. I'm a bit of a history nut, and I'd like to see unusual things. First, buy a guidebook at the tourist booth downtown, Hunter suggested, and then rent a, rent a bicycle from Emmett's, Emmett's shop on Market Street. Then you can see whatever you like. Will do, she said. How big is this island? About nine, nine miles around on the Lakeshore Road. Just a nice ride. As he spoke, she had been glancing across the narrow strip of water toward Round Island. What's that funny looking building over there, she asked. That's an abandoned lighthouse. How exciting, she exclaimed. I wish I could go over there and get a better look at it. You'll have to rent a boat, Hunter said, but I can give you a closer look. He reached into his knapsack and handed her binoculars. She thanked him and focused them on the old lighthouse. Ooh, it's kind of spooky, she said. I want to draw that too. What super binoculars? Hunter nodded, grinning at her. She wasn't as bad as a fudgy kid. Then he asked, where did you get them? They must have cost a fortune. Hunter felt himself blush. He couldn't tell her the truth, so he sort of hedged. They, um... They belong to a friend, he said. I'm using them this summer. You're lucky, she said. What do you use them for? Hunter felt uncomfortable and eager to get away, but he answered for birds. I'd like to be a bird man. That's great, Hunter respond Jancy responded. Maybe someday you get to work for National Geographic. Hunter knew that was impossible for a guy like him, but it gave him a lift to think about it. So long, he said as he started back toward town. To himself, he added, that was a close call. I shouldn't let anyone else see my binoculars.